Before we start, if you know someone with dyslexia, please share this video or leave a comment below. Because over 500,000 people in New Zealand suffer from dyslexia, but what are the government doing about it? According to the human rights, we all have a right to an education. Now I have here Gabrielle, who's just given a speech, which I'm just about to play really soon. Uh, Gabrielle's given a speech about dyslexia. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts about dyslexia versus human rights? Well, there are none. Um, basically, um, any support that dyslexic people get are through charities and organisations that you know work, put a lot of time in and effort to try and help, but they're only reaching a marginal few. And this is a government issue problem. It's not for little tiny groups around the country to try and do the best. We are real people and we're really intelligent people and we need the support of the government and the government should be ashamed that it is not doing more to help dyslexic people. We need to have um, teaching in the schools for our teacher to pick it up at an early stage instead of waiting till people get to my age and have struggled for years and years and years. Unfortunately a lot of people don't cope with it. Um, a lot of kids coming out of school they think the system doesn't like them or there's something wrong with them, they get into trouble, they go you know, to court and there's nothing there to support them. If they could be picked up at an early stage, they could probably put on a, a different track so that they could you know, mm. contribute mm. what they have. And a lot of dyslexic people have an awful lot to offer. Mm. Mm. Well, one thing that impressed me um, with your speech, which, which I won't say too much about because we're about to play it, but you know, you talked about if you went to the bank, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we cater for a lot of people with disabilities, like you know, we have ramps, we have braille, but, no, but nothing for people who can't read. Mm. And in fact, last year I was the chairman for Literacy South Canterbury, and this is a big thing that I tried to push, is the fact that if you can't read, you know, you, you struggle in every aspect of your life. You know, if the council sends out forms for you to uh, have your say, Who's got the voice for people who can't read? Um, dog registration is a big issue. You know, people mm. who, who can't read, they mm. don't know how to fill out a dog mm. registration so their dog doesn't get registered and, and they get a fine for it. Mm. Um, and so what's the key message you're trying to communicate in the speech today? Well, I think what's happening is the government just wants to put on a blindfold and rely on families and, you know, these little charities around the place that are helping these people. But not everybody has that support. And I'd like to point out too that a lot of, um, you know, single parents or families that are on a lower income, there's, there's nothing they can do because today you still have to pay to get tested. Mm. And unless you're tested, you can't get a reader writer. And to get tested costs around $180. Mm. Well, for a single parent, that's just not in their budget. And um, something has to be done because we are entitled to an education and we have an awful lot to offer to society. And, they're missing out on it. Mm. Well, let's cut to your speech right now. Mm -hmm. One of the things, can you all hear me? No. No. One of the things that struck me um, watching that film today was that it was mostly aimed at children, which I think is really great, but there's a lot of us older people that struggle with dyslexia, and it is in, as Roger said, the courts, it's in the IRD office, if you're in business, you know, I would spend three days doing my GST returns where somebody might only spend one day. It's time down for me. Um, it's, it's everywhere you go. You meet at the banks if you want loans. There are a lot of things that could be put in place to help the older generation that have struggled all these years with dyslexia. Um, when I left school at 14, I was told that, um, well, my parents were told that I'd be lucky if I got a job stacking shelves in um, Woolworths or some similar type of um, shop. I've actually done a lot more than that. Some of you might know me from um, Timaru. I started a business there called The Stables. Some of you have probably been there. Um, it was extremely hard, extremely stressful because of the council, all government bodies, council, tax, everything you do, if you're dyslexic, you have to work that much harder at it. And I think it's appalling in this day and age that there is nothing in place for children and adults when it says every, right, every child has a right to an education. My son is dyslexic, he didn't get an education, it cost me a lot of money. I was lucky and in a position to help my son. There are many children out there whose parents 
don't have dyslexia, that aren't in a financial situation to help their children. And those are the kids that are slipping through the cracks. I believe that when you're born with dyslexia, you have two options. You can be destructive with your life or you can be constructive. I was fortunate and took the, dis the constructive route. There are many that just, it's too hard. And I remember in the classrooms, I tried so hard. And I can't take something from a blackboard and put it down on a book. I lose it somewhere in between. I'd still be struggling with the first line. But, um, you know, as it said on the film, today we've got technology to help with that. Why isn't the government and all the people involved in education not listening to this and taking you know, notice? It's been around for so long and it really is time to do something with it. And I think the only way that anything is going to happen is on a national base. I have tried, I have done it you know, locally, I did open book to try and get people you know, motivated, the banks, I went to the banks, said, you know, I'll tell you the old scenario, I tell everybody, you park your car in the invalid parking space, you walk up the ramp to go into the bank, past the hole in the wall that has braille, through the electric doors for the wheelchair, up to the counter and you see a sign with an ear on it and a line through. Why can't we have a book with a line through so people can go up there and say, I need help to take out a loan, to have a credit card. So many people get into trouble with those small everyday issues and it needs to stop. It really is about dyslexia versus human rights. What's the main point you really want to push here, Gabrielle? The Human Rights and the um, Commission for Disabilities, they do not have any say with regards to people going to court. They cannot help them. That in itself, I believe, is a human rights issue. Um, a lot of the people that are dyslexic and are standing in court are way out of their depth. They're asked questions by judges, solicitors. For me, recall is a huge problem. I can't recall anything. What might the evidence I would give or anything like that would be... I could be <laughs> committing myself to perjury because I just wouldn't be able to remember. I would not survive in a courtroom environment. And at the moment, there is no facilities for people with dyslexia in courtroom environment. I mean, if, if you don't speak English properly, you get an interpreter. If you're deaf, you get sign language. Why aren't we getting support in the courts? Mm, mm. It, you know, it's, it's not a hard question to answer. It, it's obvious mm. and it has to change. So, you know, we talk about, you know, the government should do this, the government should do that, but really, what are you wanting to change? What, what will help the situation? Oh, a complete rethink of how they treat um, dyslexic people and give children the right to an education. I mean, for people my age, we've struggled through. A lot of us have made it, but there will be a lot that have fallen by the wayside with huge psychological problems, not feeling, especially for men, when they feel they can't provide for their families, they're too afraid to take out a, a bank loan or something, maybe to buy a house, they go from job to job. That's a huge problem. I mean. Today, if you, if you go for a job, the first thing they ask for is communica excellent communication skills. Mm, true. Well, I have communication skills talking to you, um, mm. but I wouldn't be able to put it on paper for you. Mm, mm. Um, and so that's me. I'm not going to get the job, and I might have an awful lot to offer that position. But that's the way it is. We just can't get jobs, and we can't keep them because of our disability. And we shouldn't have that disability because we should be taught. We, we will never be cured of dyslexia. It's something you have for life. But if you get the opportunity to learn the coping skills, you can achieve whatever you want, really. I've had successful businesses, um, but struggled with the paperwork. Well, if you enjoyed this video, Please share it, uh, please subscribe because I'm sure we'll be doing some more videos here with Gabrielle and I uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you.